Oh, oh, hey, you're here. Uh, let me put this away uh, till the end of the video. Don't worry, it'll be there when we're done. First, we have to get down to business. The business of making comics. What is up guys? Andrew here and welcome to Comic Booker. All things comics from a creator. We made it! It's 2022. Happy New Year guys! And if you clicked on this video, you're probably thinking about telling a comic story. My biggest advice to you is to start small. If you're thinking about doing a 300 page graphic novel or committing to a monthly ongoing series, you're likely setting yourself up for failure. I'm not saying you can't do it, but it's a really difficult goal to hit, even if you have a lot of experience making comics. So here's my counter proposal. Three easy ways to make a comic book. And this is really a format discussion, so we're chasing a few specific qualities, such as low page count, experiment friendly, and super doable. Starting with way one, mini comic. Here is my first mini comic, self-published when I was 15 years old and in high school. Super sorry about the coffee stain, this is the only copy I have now. Uh, it's so old now. It's just called Germinator because it's like, I was obsessed with making like a super cool comic back then. Uh, this was uh, when I was very influenced by Warren Ellis's The Authority and Alan Moore's Swamp Thing and, and Grant Morrison comics and I wanted to do kind of like this vertigo-ish superhero story. Uh, and it's a 10 page story that talks about, you know, germs. <laughs> germs and a superhero who can control them. It didn't take me that long to make, I think I made this in like a week. I folded a piece of long bond paper in half, I drew it out and then I photocopied it. And then I stapled it together. And it's just super easy. If, if you have a Xerox machine nearby, FedEx or Kinko, something, it's super easy to put together a mini comic, super cheap. And all I did was I, once I had enough copies, I took it over to my local comic shop and I asked if they could sell it. And then they bought a couple of copies for me and you know, put it out there. So yeah, mini comics are a really easy way to go about making your first comic book. It doesn't have to be fancy, although you could get really fancy with this. You could print it on colored paper. You could do a full color print with a color printer. Obviously costs go up as you get fancier, but this is like the, the barrier for entry is really low for mini comics and it's super fun. Speaking of super fun, let's talk about the second way. Uh, way number two is the web comic. So in many ways, this is the simplest way to go about making your own comic. Uh, by definition, any comic that you put on the web falls under this category. Uh, the way I like to make web comics is mostly blog style, but if you want a built-in audience, you can go tap into one of your existing social media accounts assuming you're still on social media. An Instagram comic uses the carousel feature, so you can have up to 10 images per post. Twitter limits you to four images per post, uh, but it has a very friendly zoom in feature, so you can post bigger pages and people can read it comfortably on a phone. Last I checked, Facebook also has a 10 image per post limit, but you could upload pages to an album and I think it goes up to 1,000 pages per album. So if you wanted to do a full graphic novel, you could even do that there. The point is that whatever platform you're most engaged in is already an opportunity to post comics. So try it. Here's a few comics that I posted on Instagram. Some of these are single page, some of them are multi-part. I just drew them on my iPad, you know, set them to my phone, put them up. And you could do the same. You could draw something right now, take a picture and then post it on Instagram. And there you have it, your first easy comic. There are also dedicated web comics platforms like Tapas and Line Webtoon. I'm not too well versed in these, but I'm fascinated by the vertical scroll format and I'd love to experiment with these one day. Okay, let's talk about way number three, which is the anthology comic. At any given time on the internet, there's always a few open calls for comics anthology projects. So there are several advantages to doing an anthology comic. One is the limited page count. The limited page count usually means you're doing just one page, maybe at the most eight pages. So you can experiment and go all out and uh, you only have to sustain your style for that long. Two is it usually comes with a theme and a theme usually means parameters and that can be really fun to play with. Like let's say your theme is something under the bed or, or you know, your quarantine experience. You know, that really gets your juices going and limits you so that you don't overthink things. And the third advantage is usually, you know, you end up bumping into a community of fellow comics creators, which is always a blessing because, you know, comics, as I always say, it's a lonely profession. So being able to connect with people 
people through projects that you work on is a really big bonus and you may end up becoming friends with them on social media or connecting with them and maybe collaborating more in the future. Some veritable institutions in the comics world like 2000 AD and Mad Magazine are anthologies which put out works by people like Alan Moore, Grant Morrison, Frank Quitely, Sergio Aragones, and more before they were big names. And in the past few years, anthologies have really come back into vogue from books like Batman Urban Legends to Wolverine Black and White to Superman Red and Black or Red and Blue and Wonder Woman Black and Gold. The color books, there's there's a lot of them. Anthologies are in now and you know, you can you can be a part of that. I've taken part in a few. Uh, here is my first published, uh, officially published work. Uh, after that mini comic, uh, this is Siegel of Freedom in the Philippines and I was 17 years old when I did, drew the first story and uh, the last story in this book. Here's an issue of Dark Horse Presents. Uh, I worked with a writer on this one, uh, Sean Manning, and we're in the same anthology as like Neil Gaiman and Paul Chadwick and uh, it's just super cool to be published by Dark Horse. <laughs> and in 2020, during the quarantine, uh, I helped put together this quarantine anthology book. Uh, it's just a series of one-page comics uh, where people talk about their experiences during the quarantine, uh, what it was like, what it felt like uh, during that crazy year we all went through. And it got good press. We even got featured by the Wall Street Journal. It was great. I did this cover, by the way. I was really happy with that. If you're looking for publishing opportunities, there's an awesome Twitter account called Anthology Comics, which tweets open calls that you can check out. There's a Facebook group called Comic Book Anthology Creators, and I'm sure there are more resources out there if you just Google it up. Anyway, just keep your eyes peeled and jump at any opportunities you can find. If you're anything like me, you probably have a ton of ideas for comic stories. And honestly, doing these short form comics is one of the best ways to test your ideas. Work through multiple multiples and learn as you make them. If you're only doing three to five pages, you can try it a different style or medium, go minimalist, or really push yourself to do something different. Alan Moore once talked about how the short form was a better training ground for creators because it, if you can tell a satisfying story in six pages, it's much easier to do it in 22. Whereas if you're used to the long form, it's a real struggle to compress that for a short comic. And hey, if it clicks, you can always make another story and another and then another until it starts to add up. Here's my first book. It's called Kare Kare Comics and it's a 128 page collection of comics in many different styles by me. I'm showing this here because almost all the stories in here were either mini comics, web comics, or anthology comics. Over the years, I did so many that they eventually built up to the point where I could collect them into a book. And hey, if you start a short comic today, you might end up doing the same thing too. If you're already subscribed to the channel, you'll know from my last video that my big goal for 2022 is to have a table at New York Comic Con. That means I have nine months to come up with a new comic for the table, among other things. I'm gonna take my advice and start small, and I'll start laying out a plan with you guys in my next video. Anyway, that's all for this one. I hope you found this useful or inspiring and adhere. I hereby bless you with creative magic. Go forth and make an awesome comic story. I'll see you in the next video. Peace.